order to understand the, the purpose and the reason why we founded the Global Adaptation Network, we just need to step back a little bit. Climate change is not only happening already, but it's going to get worse. So the need for adaptation for countries and people to make themselves more resilient to climate change is increasing. The Global Adaptation Network focuses in particular not so much on the scientific underpinning of adaptation action, but on the actual knowledge of how to do it in practice, whether it's in terms of building sea defences, flood management planning, or what, what, whatever aspect of adaptation it is. And so there's uh, an important need there for uh, people to learn uh, from good experience, to learn from success stories, uh, and this is very much the role that the Global Adaptation Network um, has. One of these activities is the learning exchange where we bring practitioners from uh, various parts of the world uh, that are facing the similar challenges. Smart agriculture, urban adaptation, how to mobilize community user groups and uh, incentivize uh, grassroots uh, development in various communities. Coastal erosion, salt intrusion into their agricultural complexes, as well as waste uh, management. These type of exchanges not only give capacity to the local governments, but also ensure that these adaptation techniques are learned firsthand with a hands-on experience. Our work in these university and city linkages, I think, is one of our most exciting areas of work that we've undertaken. This uh, is builds on a, a very successful model developed in the United States. This is known as the uh, EPIC model, whereby the universities uh, provide support mainly by making students, graduate and undergraduate students, available to the city authorities to undertake particular tasks to build the sustainability of the city. So they can use these students to generate new ideas, to go out into communities to find out about people's needs, undertaking surveys to identify appropriate solutions to address climate change impacts. And the universities can give their students uh, experience of addressing uh, real world problems. So, where does Global Adaptation Network come into this? Well, what we are trying to do is to see if we can extend this successful model to other parts of the world. There are already strong partnerships developing in Nairobi, in Lusaka, in uh, Ethiquini in, in South Africa, between the uh, city authorities and the, their local universities. On an occasional basis, the, the network organises these global forums. Uh, we recently held our second one, which was actually in Abu Dhabi, where we bring together experts on adaptation to focus on some particular key issues. We were looking at the role of the private sector and private finance, what that can contribute to adaptation. We are looking at how we measure success, how we measure progress in building resilience. And very importantly, we had a theme on ensuring that adaptation reaches the most vulnerable groups in society, uh, especially people with disabilities. The Global Adaptation Network, in partnership with the UNFCCC, is also carrying out a LACI or the Lima Adaptation Knowledge Initiative, which tries to address uh, knowledge gaps that occur due to lack of access to uh, information. Um, GAN has so far carried out six uh, regional uh, lackeys which uh, try to prioritize uh, knowledge gaps per region and then uh, tries to partner with uh, um, uh, regional organizations to uh, close these gaps and address the lack of access to this knowledge and information.